There's a time and a place for many things, a time to be content, complacent, and even angry. And it seems that in recent weeks, people have been angry at the snow, at the cold, at winter, and even maybe today, since we've lost one hour of sleep. We might be a little grumpier than we think. When was the last time, however, that you were really angry? Really angry to the point where you didn't know what to do to calm down again. Anger in itself is not a sin. But when you grow so full of anger that it overtakes your ability to do daily tasks and be socially acceptable, there is definitely a problem. Well, our reading from John 2 is a story about Jesus. And some people even asked, why is this included? Because Jesus, this was not normal behavior for Jesus. He was angry. This is the story doesn't talk about the calm person that he was, the miracle worker, the one who quietly went about doing his ministry, healing and preaching and teaching and withdrawing from crowds and going into prayer. It's about a man who is angry. And what is he angry at? He is angry at what he sees around him as he walks through the temple. And it's anger mixed with disappointment. He sees people trading and cheating, taking advantage of other people in the courtyard when they should be praying and worshiping God. Jesus sees men selling cattle, sheep, doves, and other people exchanging money and cheating them at the same time. We have to think about it. This is the Passover time when the city would, would swell from 50,000 people to 180,000 people. People would be coming from faraway places to go to the temple to offer a sacrifice. And there would be people in search of food, lodging, and to make that sacrifice happen. They would need to purchase an animal, an unblemished animal or a bird, and they would have to pay their temple tax, an amount of money required to keep the temple up to speed and up to date. And of course, those coins were special for that particular purpose of the tax for the temple. People would help them exchange this money, but often they're met like scalpers and cheaters taking advantage of the people who came to truly worship their God. The commercial implications of Passover, almost like malls of today, Christmas Eve. You know how busy and the ringing the cash registers that is. Jesus looks at this and he looks around and he sees what's happening and he's not pleased. You can imagine Jesus' heart rate increasing, his palms getting sweaty, his blood pressure rising, his moving around to find something to be like cords, and he makes those cords into a whip, and he's whipping them, and he's making it. He's angry. He ch then chooses to take that whip, and he drives all those animals, the cattle and the sheep, everything, away from that temple gate, and there's chaos. He's angry. Then he looks over and he sees the money changers and he, what he said, go over there, he goes over and flips all the tables over and all the money goes all over the place. It's chaos. People are yelling and screaming at him, how dare you? How dare you? He says to the dove salesman, get those out of here. Everybody hears him. He says, how dare you turn my father's house into a market? The salesman doesn't respond because Jesus is really speaking to everyone. It was chaos. Why didn't Jesus go and speak to the chief priests, teachers, and elders, those people who ran the temple, about this? Because he wanted to also teach them about what would happen to him. He says, destroy the temple and I'll raise it again in three days. But of course, he wasn't talking about the physical temple around him, but himself. The Jews did not listen clearly as to what it was that he was speaking. 
They thought he was referring to that building. It took, him 40, it took them 46 years to build, and here he's going to raise it in three days. They were not sure what he meant. But he knew that he was going to die, to rise again, and bring about change. Did Jesus need anger management training to control his behavior in public? Why was he so angry? They didn't get his purpose. That is, the whole community, those gathered together, did not understand who he was. And as far as the Gospel of John is concerned, he's upset because all this buying and selling has intruded upon the sacred space for worship. The purpose of the church, the temple, to worship God, and it was gone. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. It's not a business. What would Jesus say if he looked into the churches of our community today? Is worship becoming centered on the things we do and what we want, rather than what God is pre present giving to us and forgiving us in word and sacrament? Have we forgotten that it's about him and not me and you? And the words that Ron shared with us about the mission of the, ch of the downtown mission in the name of Christ. Why did Jesus get so angry? People were becoming complacent about what had been happening, accepting tolerance, and even caring for others was so broadly interpreted that sometimes we wonder about the purpose. How do we share? It is a house of prayer not a market. His message was not verbal, but his action in anger was clearly understood. It's a place where concerns are for others are shared and where teaching God's ways continues all the time. But there had to have been something that really irked Jesus that day. He'd been in the temple before. He noticed these vendors before and what they were doing and when he first started teaching. Why didn't he speak then? Why didn't he speak to people in authority of the temple? Because he knew his own death and resurrection was imminent. He wanted to bring about change and draw attention to him as the Son of God. Jesus' anger was in check. He calmed down afterwards, and then he continued on. He continued to perform miracles, and people wondered who he was, but they didn't say, well, that's the one that wrecked the temple. No, that's the one that brought change and the space that we call the temple a place to worship once again. But those in authority, those chief priests, teachers of the law, so the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they knew who he was, and they watched him. What could he do now but to fulfill God's purpose for his life? What about you? We get angry. We wonder why. We look back and say, why was I so angry about those little things that seem not to be important? But there is a change, a transformation that takes place. And it's that transformation in our feelings and thoughts about who we are as disciples of Jesus Christ, as people of faith that make a difference in what we can do every day. How we control our anger makes a difference. How we speak to one another and share with one another about what it means to be prayerfully active in a congregation means showing our faith. How do we live out our faith? Yes, it's okay to get angry, but how do you control it? How do you share it? What is the purpose behind it? Because that's what Jesus demonstrated in this story. He got angry for a reason, and the reason was to remember that his church, the temple, the synagogue, the place of worship is that, a place to worship our God. Let us be reminded of that. As we continue to remember Jesus, yes, the one who got angry, the one whose purpose was being fulfilled through the death and resurrection, as we continue to worship God, let us remember this in faith and in love. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray that when we become angry that we may control it. 
that we might understand why and that it is the behavior of others that hurts us. Help us to learn from Jesus and care enough to confront logically and with good intentions. We ask this as we continue to live for you. Amen.